Hello, I'm Jamie Morris, and welcome to the wonderful world of science. Today's topic, my Inquiry 3 project, face-to-face -face versus online contacts, and how the experience of doing science is influenced by the context in which it occurs. The catapult experiment. This experiment was done synchronously using Skype. When my partner and I started this experiment, we were very secretive and quiet, as I didn't want to share my strategies with my partner, and neither did he, with me. I attempted many different ways of creating my catapult. My first attempt just didn't cut it. It looked really good to me, but the base was completely unstable. I quickly grew frustrated because I was at a loss for ideas as to how to make my catapult that had a strong base. I decided to try to strengthen my base by making the back of the catapult into an X shape with pencils. This did add a bit of stability, but the catapult itself didn't have any resistance whatsoever. I used my rubber bands to add some more resistance, but this time too much resistance collapsed my base, and I decided to take my entire catapult apart and start from scratch all over again. This time I created my catapult making sure the rubber bands were extra tight and added extra support to the sides of the base. After working on this for about an hour and a half, I feel like I finally had gotten somewhere. I attempted to launch the M&M and it went 65 inches. Success! I was completely ecstatic. That is, until I shared my final results with my partner. His finished product launched the M&M between 32 and 44 feet. He made his catapult with a square base and used many rubber bands to add weight and extra stability. With his catapult, he could control the range that he shot his M&M by how far he pulled the catapult back. My partner absolutely loved this experiment and claimed that it didn't matter to him if we did this face-to-face -face or via Skype. I myself was not a fan of working on this project via Skype. I felt that my partner inferred that doing this experiment via Skype meant that the experiment was a race or competition. I thought it was extremely hard to get support and grew very frustrated quickly. I also had a great deal of difficulty with the impression sampler. I felt that this was a distraction as I always had to keep a constant eye on the timing when using it. After 85 minutes, my sampler actually shut down and I lost all of my data. I was very upset about this and was very glad that I had taken notes as I created my various catapults. The egg drop experiment. As you can see from my results from the impression sampler, I was not too keen on the idea of completing this experiment. In the beginning, I had a very negative attitude about it from the catapult experiment. As I had gotten into the experiment, my excitement grew. I had come up with a great idea, but not on my own. Working face to face with my partner was a huge help. Though he didn't want to initially share his thoughts about the experiment, he did end up collaborating with me on it, and surprisingly, both of our egg protectors that we created protected our eggs on the very first try. I began my experiment by creating a protective barrier for my egg. My partner was thinking in a very similar way. I attached two balloons to each side of my egg with the hopes of it adding more protection to my egg. Through collaborating, my partner thought the same way, except he used a lot more tape than I had. I was then advised by my partner that I needed even more protection surrounding my egg. Adding the toilet paper roll and the pe a piece of paper around my egg for extra protection seemed like a good idea, but after some discussion, I had changed my mind. I had decided to take the other half of my egg carton and place it around my egg. This seemed to really pad my egg. I then added some paper to the top to help slow my egg from its fall. My partner also added some paper to his egg, which he hoped would help to pad the egg more from its fall. We were both ready for the big egg drop, and thankfully, we both succeeded on the first try. Both working virtually and face-to-face -face on a science project can be very beneficial to students in a classroom, especially in the area of science. To me, working face-to-face -face on a project is the old-fashioned way and the way that I am most used to and comfortable with using. Technology is a way of life for students today, 
And any way that technology can be incorporated into the classroom will only benefit students. The main thing that teachers need to pay attention to and think about prior to differentiating instruction methods in their classroom, especially when it comes to incorporating various forms of technology, is that they should actually teach students how to use the specific technology to complete the given task. This is where I struggled the most, is I do not feel I used Skype to build my catapult with my partner in the correct way. We needed to collaborate and communicate more with one another so that we both felt that the end result of our experiment was a success.